Michigan State keeping two key players from the portal. Also, Courtney Hawkins is staying on staff. And then we dive into the mailbag to answer questions like, why are there so many Spartans going into the portal? And yeah, you know, there's a lot of basketball questions that we'll get to. Woohoo! Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Locked on Spartans, your team every single day. And if you're watching right now on YouTube, yeah, we're doing a live show. We've been doing... A lot more of these than we used to back in the day. I don't know. I guess I'm just bored. And the thrill of going live is what keeps me rolling out of bed every single morning. But no, really, hey, thanks a lot for joining. If you're watching live or if you're listening on the podcast, thank you all very much. Please rate, review, subscribe, smash that five-star button if you are listening on podcast. And away we go into the show. Enough of the boring housekeeping stuff. On this beautiful Monday to start the week, Michigan State got some key additions back from the portal, both in a position group that I was starting to get a little nervous about because, well, it was the offensive line. And you saw my concern meter keep ticking, ticking, ticking towards not full-blown panic, but just like kind of sort of light panic. But hey, you get two guys that are well, odds are going to be slated to start next season back because Ethan Boyd, he announced that he is taking his name out of the portal. And then Brandon Baldwin, a few hours later, did the same on Monday. Now, Ethan Boyd, he was the first one to announce his return. So we'll start with him. Right tackle, 313 offensive snaps and just gave up two sacks and 13 pressures in those 313 offensive snaps. Now, Odds are he will be starting this year, and really, if you ask a lot of people, myself included, probably should have been the priority starter this year because, <laughs> not to slander hardworking college kids, but I'm not sure if we started the right guy at right tackle this year. Anyway, let's move on to left tackle, Brandon Baldwin. He started 10 games last season, 533 snaps, three sacks, and 29 pressures for Brandon Baldwin. So... Yeah, that, these are good wins for Michigan State. I mean, look, I'm not going to claim that, hey, it's Jack Conklin returning to Michigan State, or, hey, this is going to be a team that anchors the best offensive line in the country. But, guys, these are key additions here, and these are two kids that, yes, despite what Internet trolls want you to believe, like these are kids that did have some offers elsewhere in Power 5 landscapes. Ethan Boyd, for crying out loud, it was reported from the brass over there in Tempe, that he visited Arizona State not too long ago. And just to go off on a tangent, I mean, this isn't even about Arizona State football or Michigan State football. How, how can you have a kid visit Arizona State and not just have his commitment within 20 minutes there, especially in the month of December? Like, it is a beautiful campus with beautiful people, beautiful things that do around that campus. I, I don't know how Arizona State doesn't lock up any, uh, any kid that's visiting them. But anyway... Let's keep our eye on the ball, Matt. Uh, back to the main focus here. This is big because why was I getting so concerned about the offensive line? You heard me on yesterday's show. You heard me on a few shows last week, too, is that as kids kept on jumping into the portal, that number of offensive linemen that you had to replace got up to nine. You take the seven guys that entered their name in the portal. You take the two seniors that are leaving for graduation. Nine offensive linemen is a lot to fix, guys. And, hey, I'm not sure how strong this market is for offensive linemen anyway. I, not, not to throw dirt on a kid that just left, but the, the last guy that started at right tackle, he just landed at Oklahoma. Not my favorite right tackle necessarily. We saw a lot of things go south, and, well, my goodness gracious, if that's one of the best tackles on the board that Oklahoma got that USC also called and offered – Oh boy. Um, hmm, okay. Maybe this isn't the strongest talent pool to go fishing in. If we are replacing, I'll say it again, nine offensive linemen. So right now, Hey, 
You're back to having to replace just seven offensive linemen, and you have the tackles right now secured. And hey, with some coaching from Coach Maholchek, then I get it. We heard a lot about the last offensive line coach, him being a great coach and great developer. So I get being a little gun shy to just blindly believe great coaching is happening here in East Lansing. But if you believe everyone on the West Coast that was an Oregon State fan that loved Coach M, as they call him. Um, yeah, maybe this is going to be a good start for Michigan State's offensive line rebuild. Now, Courtney Hawkins, after days, if not weeks, of wondering if or when he was going to be named as the wide receivers coach at Michigan State to see if Jonathan Smith was going to keep him around, it is finally official that, yes, he is going to be the wide receivers coach. He had interest from other teams, of course. So, again, I, I think it's a good addition and a good guy to keep on this staff just for – Recruiting ties, state of Michigan, Midwest. I mean, obviously you're killing two birds with one stone there. But also, I'm not as down as other people are about the development of wide receivers. It was an interesting group this year. A lot of injuries going in and out. But also hard to ignore. And I know that he did a lot of his damage at other at another school. But Keon Coleman, I, I do think is actually a win for Courtney Hawkins. I do think that there was some developmental success there under Courtney Hawkins as well. Jaden Reed in his short amount of time as well. And yes, this was a wide receiver group that by and large also injured was very young as well. So I do like keeping him around. Guys, believe me, I know it wasn't a perfect year last year for any position group. The wide receiver probably falls to the bottom of the list of position groups I was actually worried about. So Courtney Hawkins, he's staying players excited, recruits are excited, namely Nick Marsh as well. And that means that Jonathan Smith has eight assistant coaches on his staff. So there are two more that he gets to play with. He already has the offensive coordinator, running backs coach, offensive line coach, tight ends coach, and now wide receivers coach. And well, being an offensive oriented coach like Jonathan Smith is, that's five assistants plus a sixth in a head coach that is, well, just like I said, very offensive oriented. Now on the defense, you have your defensive coordinator, Joe Rossi, secondary, and then defensive line coach. You have two more spots. I imagine one will be used for special teams. Maybe the other one, I think it's safe to assume that it'll be a defensive coach, maybe another guy in the secondary, maybe a linebackers coach, maybe one Max Bola, the guy I've been kind of campaigning for here and there. And yes, it would be a big jump up from what he does at Notre Dame right now as a grad assistant. But hey, I don't know, just take a flyer on Max Bola. If not, at the, at the very least, just give him like an analyst role here. Bring him back home. Come on. Uh, speaking of linebackers, actually, Jacoby Winman, he is in the transfer portal as well. And I think it was last week or two weeks ago, he tweeted out that he has another year of eligibility left. And just the tone of that tweet I just sounded as surprised as the rest of us because I honestly thought he was out of eligibility. But that COVID year did so many wacky things to everyone's eligibility where you could just play as long as the NCAA never checks. Uh, so, yes, he is in the portal hoping it's one of these test the waters thing that have been going on recently here with the latest portal editions. But we will have to see. But, yes, uh, safe to say that, yeah, the guy that two years ago won multiple Big Ten Player of the Weeks, he won a Big Ten Player of uh, – sorry, a National Player of the Week as well two seasons ago. Safe to say that we'd rather have him than not because just imagine a nice linebacking core with Jordan Hall and Jacoby Winman in there as well. The Jordan Hall thing I'll touch on briefly a little bit. It seems so weird to talk – like Jordan Hall about this, but this is just the way things are in college football in this day and age that, hey, he could be coming back, which is just odd that, you know, it's 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 news if a kid just stays on a team in the offseason. But things could be trending in the right direction there. There was a screenshot on Instagram from one of his accounts. I think he has two Instagram accounts. That is the team running on to Spartan Stadium's field and him saying, how could I say no to a place like this? So could he be returning? He very well could be, but nothing's official yet. But then again, will it ever become official because he's already on the team? And God, I just, I love college football. It's the best sport that there will ever, ever be. But God, I just hate the direction it's going in. But oh, well, nothing that I can cry about will change the way that's going to go. And we're going to end this segment with talking about Sam Levitt, of course, former quarterback who left Michigan State. And well, he told Spartans Illustrated that he left because he was kind of miffed that Jonathan Smith, well, at Oregon State, in Sam Levitt's backyard, never offered him. He found a new home 
He's going to Arizona State and – oh, that's weird. I, Arizona State never offered him – Either that's a little bizarre, but then again, okay, there, you know, there's a different coach there, Coach Dillingham. You know, he's taken the reins not too long ago, and he was at Oregon as the offensive coordinator. And uh, oh, that's strange. He never recruited Sam Levin or gave him an offer when he was at Oregon either. So, huh, that's almost as if that was pretty disingenuous. And uh, maybe just maybe that we caught wind of a. Uh, Quarterback from Corvallis that was going to come in and well just kind of be the starter from day one. I that's just that's just me putting two and two together. I again, who, who's to say? All right, gang, we will be back here in a hot second with a ton of email questions from you beautiful listeners. But first, you need to talk your ear off about LinkedIn jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview, and that's why you got to go check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And LinkedIn is not just some ordinary job board, guys. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals who make it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 20 four hours. And LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time to resource that hire. So trust LinkedIn jobs with this hire. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions. You got that right. They apply. Also need to talk your ear off about home field apparel. Got a brand new package at the doorstep today because after I went to home field apparel, picked out this great vintage 1987 Big 10 Conference Championship long sleeve t-shirt. Put it on. And again, guys, like I, there are so many things you can talk about with home field, how cool it looks. Like I love this vintage look. I love that it's a callback to the 87 season. But mm, when I put it on, it's like a choir of angels were hugging my body. This is, once again, the most comfortable article of clothing I have in my closet. So if you want to hook up with Spartan in your life, or hey, let's say for some reason they're not a Michigan State fan, Homefield has dozens and dozens of schools to pick from. Go to homefieldapparel.com and hook it up this holiday season. Also, save yourself some money with promo code LOS23. That is LOS23 at Homefield Apparel for 15% off of your first order. Again, gang, LOS23 for 15% off at homefieldapparel.com. All righty, let's go into the mailbag here. Locked on Spartans at gmail.com if you ever want to reach out. Or last week, I did cast a line out there for some questions as well. Sheehan underscore sports on Twitter is another good place to find me at. Jeff is going to bat lead off here. We're going to get two football questions out of the way and then shift things to basketball the sport that all of us are truly in love with. Uh, who doesn't want to talk about basketball right now? God. But anyway, Jeff is going to bat lead off here. Why are so many players continuing to enter the transfer portal, even though coaching situations have stabilized? How are they going to get the numbers to field a team next year? This is going to be a Deion Sanders type roster turnover, but unintentional. I get it because, hey, at the first opening of the transfer portal, or God, even a week before, I think it was, what, 15 players announced their intentions to enter the transfer portal. That number dropped back to 14 once Darius Snow said that he was going to return. But this weekend, we also saw an influx. I believe it was six or seven guys entered their name. And that's a lot of kids. Now, what I will say is this. I think, and I've said so on the show in an episode a few weeks ago, that I, if I was an advisor of one of these kids at Michigan State, I would tell them, to get in the transfer portal. Even if you are 99% certain to go back to Michigan State, guys, just find out what that 1% is all about. Jonathan Smith is resetting his career right now. He just got up from Oregon State to come to Michigan State. The Michigan State program as a whole is hitting the reset button as well. If you are a kid, why not maybe even just dabble if hitting the reset button is right for you? Now, of course, that's what I would say as an advisor. As a Michigan State fan, like a lot of you guys, no shot I want most of these kids in the transfer portal. Like, I don't want to say this out loud, but if I'm being truthful with myself, why not see what's out there? Whether it's for NIL purposes, maybe that, hmm, oh my goodness, I can get a lot more than I ever thought I could get? Huh, well, it's a good thing I jumped in the transfer portal to find out. Or maybe it's just seeing what else is out there as far as playing time goes, personnel, scheme fit, all that good stuff. But, hey, again... 
I've talked about this too when we brought this up last time. What's the best way to get a raise in life in many professions? It's by going to a different company. And if you're not going to take that company's offer, at least you can go back to your company with what they're going to give you, which is going to be higher than your annual raise that you get. Like this is a real thing in the real life. Kind of like that with college football as well. So I think that's why a good number of kids are entering the transfer portal, if not just to kick the tires on some things. Now, is that every situation? No, not necessarily. Like maybe, for example, uh, hey, Jonathan Smith likes to run a lot of offensive schemes with blocking tight ends. And, well, you're a tight end that didn't make blocking a priority here at Michigan State. And maybe it was just best that both you guys just went in your own separate ways. Like there's some of that situation going on as well. But, yeah, just just see, see what's out there. See what you're worth. Ray Ray writes in, look at Michigan State football schedule next year. Who are they most likely to beat the brakes off of? I'm not rich. I want to buy a ticket to a satisfying game. I love that mindset, by the way. Just damn it. If I'm getting to one game, I want it to be a bloodbath. And I say this, and I said it last year. I, I'll probably say this every year the rest of my life. If you're going to go to one game, I get that, you know, the flashy, you know, Michigan game, Ohio State games, like those are fun to go to. Like, by all means, go ahead and buy that ticket. But if you're looking to have a good time, the opener every single time. Michigan State's undefeated at that point. The vibes are tremendously high. The weather is sensational. I Try to be on campus for the opener and not have an incredible time of your life. And more times than not, Michigan State's going to walk away with a victory there. So, yes, I mean, next year against Florida Atlantic, that, that's the ticket that you want to buy. All right. <clears throat> well, that was fun talking about football at Sport that, against all odds right now, is the more optimistic of the two right now. Actually, I shouldn't say of the two. Shout out to hockey, by the way, with a nice sweep over Notre Dame uh, just, you know, through the weekend. Not too shabby there. All right, let's go to basketball, though. Let's rock on. Steve writes in, if Tyson Walker hadn't come back, how many wins would this team have won at this point of the season? And what kind of outlook would we be, would we be looking at right now? So how many wins would this team have? Right now, Michigan State sits at four and five on the season. The record would still be four and five, I think. Um, look, he exploded against uh, Butler, had 21 points. Michigan State won that game by 20 points anyway. The other three opponents, they were going to win no matter what Tyson Walker did. Heck, he even missed one of those games. Whereas the five losses, God, how many times this year has Tyson Walker been really strong? If not, was the reason these were close games? And they're losing it anyway. Now, what I will say is that what would the outlook be without Tyson Walker? Oh, man. There's a lot of Michigan State fans in a dark place right now as far as it comes to making the tournament or are they going to make the NIT? If Tyson Walker, there's like one of the only guys, if not the only guy you can count on night in and night out to score points, bring the defense, and show tenacity and effort, Oh boy, you take him off the team. Uh, we're not wondering if they're making the tournament. We're, we are. We are actually wondering if the NIT will be in their future. Like it, this. This would be comically bad if Tyson Walker wasn't on the team. So no, same record if he wasn't there. But man, the outlook, guys. If, if you thought it looks bad right now, oh, try to take away Tyson Walker from that equation. That would not be a fun time. Colton writes in long time listener, first time emailer. Well, thank you very much, Colton. Appreciate you. Why is it that every team we face in big 10 basketball comes in with awful three point shooting percentages, but when they play us and they look like primetime golden state, I swear I see people making multiple three pointers that look like they've never shot one before in their life. Is it our defense? Is it sheer luck? Well, how about it? Just a little combination of both there, Colton. Uh, I go back to the Wisconsin game where, let's just say this right now, both Wisconsin and Nebraska, the last two games, shot 43.5% from three-point land. That is at least a 10% bump from where they are on the season. Both of these teams shoot it lower than 33.5% on the season. Now for the Wisconsin game, I will say this. Uh, pretty easy to make 43.5% of your three-point shots when you are getting 90% of those looks wide open. I mean, Jesus, Stephen Crowell, I know that he's not, you know, you're a Kevin Durant, if you will. 
But my goodness gracious, uh, I think it was pretty clear by the second made three-pointer that maybe we should stop going under screens and, you know, hang out by him behind the three-point arc because, uh, yeah, he blitzed us for four of four shooting. Now, uh, again, like he, he's not going to make it rain, but on his career, he is a 33% shooter. Not great, but has shown that you can do it. Michigan State did some user error there by going under every single screen and giving up a lot of wide open looks. Now the luck portion, yeah, Nebraska had some good looks. They had some great shots. They also had some tremendous, tremendous rabbit out of your you-know-what shots too. Uh, that last second shot clock buzzer beater from 45 feet, it seemed like, from Hoiberg. Yeah, that was not fun. The banked in three-pointer. Guys, when I become Big Ten commissioner, if you bank in a three-pointer, it actually takes three points off the scoreboard. But right now, I'm not the Big Ten commissioner. It's Tony Petiti right now, and that unfortunately counts. So it's a good mix, or I guess we'll call it a horrible mix, of, well, Michigan State's fault, like the Wisconsin game, or just, just blind sheer luck. And that's the second time this season where three-point shooting has had some crazy fluky luck involved. The first was quite the opposite of making shots out of luck. It was, well, we already know it, the one three-point made outing against James Madison where if, hey, you make just one more, you win that game. But, no, I'm I, that this isn't me crying saying, like, oh, man, we have two fluky losses. Oh, this is so unfair. Like, no, Michigan State also had their opportunities to win in other ways in both of those games. But, yeah, it – it, it, it's just it's just kind of just another kick in the nads, if you will. <laughs> that just uh, hey, as if as if things are just going bad on their own. We've got some some secondary powers that are intervening right now. It's great. It's great. All right, we're gonna get to the second half of Colton's question here in a hot segment. First, I just need to talk your ear off about Fan Duel Sportsbook Gang. As the season gets colder and older, the NFL offers stay white hot on. FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's right. You heard me correct. You don't have to lay the points. All you got to do is just look at the menu of the NFL games going on this weekend and just take whatever money line that looks most appealing to you, place $5 on it. And if you win, that is $150 in bonus bets. If your team wins, it is quite truly that simple. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, or, hey, my favorite, First time touchdown score. So visit fanduel.com slash lockdown and kick off the NFL season with us. It's FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, back into the mailbag here. And Colton wrote a second question as well. He says, Will our offense and rebounding return to normal with Jackson Kohler back in the mix? Mati Sissoko is a great human being. That he is one of the best of all time at Michigan State. But he is becoming a liability that is costing us more than contributing. <sighs> We'll be talking more about Jackson Kohler tomorrow with Carter Elliott as well, because I got to say, I talked about this a little bit on yesterday's show after the Nebraska loss, but maybe the maybe the most bleak moment of the season so far is just how many people are pinning their hopes on Jackson Kohler. Uh, a guy that is coming off of a foot injury and that, you know, wasn't necessarily like a force last year, but dang it, that's all we got for hope. So yeah, no, it will be refreshing to see a post player actually, first of all, catch an entry pass like that that'll just be a market improvement right there but after he catches said entry pass actually has like post moves and can you know what they call score the ball from the center position on the low block like it will be refreshing to see a center be able to do that what i will caution with the jackson kohler thing i know that a lot of us have great memories of last year his good post moves maybe this year he'll get better at finishing but the defense wasn't necessarily uh, sensational, right, guys? So, yes, he can you know, offer up 10 points a game, let's call it. Uh, oh, boy, based on what we saw last year, you can also give up 16 lickety split as well. So, we'll see. I I hope a lot of you guys are right and that Jackson Kohler is just the missing puzzle piece to get things in the right direction. But, huh, 
Oh, God. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know if Jackson Kohler is quite that good. Uh, and that's, you know, not even considering the foot injury he's going to come off of. All right. Dave writes in, I'm in almost panic mode with the basketball team. My question, what happened with all the glowing comments on freshman four-star recruit Gehrig Norman? I thought he was a three-point threat. Is his defense that bad that he is going to redshirt? Do you have the inside scoop on why he is a redshirt? Will Izzo accept an NIT bid if we qualify and Unless something changes, a long winter ahead until spring football. Keep telling it like it is. I will, I'll try my best, Dave. Thank you very much. The Garrick Norman thing, I think Izzo alluded to it not too long ago. I think it was two or three weeks ago that he made a quip about Garrick Norman not shooting the ball well in practice. Like, yes, he came here known to be a three-point guy, but I guess so far in practice – the three-point ball has not go down at the clip that they want it to. And also, he's maybe about 15 pounds away from having that Division One frame. But, like, at this point, oh, great. oh no, a guy's going to shoot 30% from three. Oh, no, wouldn't that be crazy? Like, we, we already have that. Like, just, just trot him out there and let the kids start growing into this college game. Oh, no, he's, like, 10 or 15 pounds away from being ready. Like, I, who who could care right now? Who You don't need to be uh, Mr. Olympia. To shoot some three pointers, like I don't know. So it, it's clear by now that they're going to keep that redshirt. I think again, I know Izzo a few weeks ago when he said those comments about Garrick that they will revisit it if they have to. I would say right now, with the sample size being big enough to realize that well, three point shooting is an issue that you might want to burn that red shirt. But I'm not the Hall of Fame head coach, so that's where we stand on uh Garrick Norman. Will Izzo accept an NIT bid? Let's yeah, we're gonna table that to later when it's like actually a serious conversation. I just, I, I, I can't, I can't let my mental health slip that much, that much this late at night. Uh, all right. We're going to go through some miscellaneous questions here, like some fun ones, because God, what a, what a sour note that would be on if we just ended on a NIT question. Red Cedar Spartan writes in, what are your top three favorite sport team wins ever? And what are your top three heartbreaks for your teams? All right, I guess it's not all optimistic. We do have some heartbreak in here. Let's start with the heartbreak first. The 2006 Notre Dame game, when they were up 17 points going into the fourth quarter, I don't think I spoke to anyone until like 3.30 p.m. the following day. I was livid after that game. The 2013 Elite Eight UConn game. Everyone talks about the Texas Tech game being, oh, the one that got away from Tom Izzo. Or the 2016 Middle Tennessee State upset. I'm like, oh, that's the one that got away from Izzo for title number two. No, no, for me, it will always be the 2013 UConn game. They were up in the second half. If they get to the Final Four, such a soft Final Four that year. That was the time for number two for Izzo. But nothing is a knife to the heart quite like the 2011 Big Ten Championship game. It was forever since Michigan State went to a Rose Bowl. I absolutely loved this team, loved Kirk Cousins, and this was it. They are going to do it. They are going to beat Russell Wilson again until they converted fourth and 92 or whatever it was. And then, uh-oh, there's another flag on the field for Ruff and the punter, and I was I was with my then-girlfriend, now-wife's family, and they, they almost saw me cry that night. They almost saw me cry. I, luckily, I stepped away when the tears did start to come. But uh, no, no, I, I didn't actually start to cry. They just welled up in my eyes. They had never rolled down my cheek. Um, anyway, let's mix it up. Let's do some fun uh, games here. Now, three favorite sport team wins. I got to go with the classic Rose Bowl 2013. I was very, very fortunate enough to be there for that one. The Michigan State win over Duke in 2019. Because, I mean, just going to Izzo's eighth Final Four, very fun. But the fact that you slayed one of the most talent-laden rosters that college basketball will ever see in that Duke team, three NBA picks in the top ten to go to a Final Four, like that that was truly an unbelievable game. And then for third, I, God, I mean, there. look, I know times are really bad right now in East Lansing, and we are not having fun during any season. But we are blessed that there are a great, great list of options for, you know, just best sporting events of all time. So right now, 2015, the Jalen Watts Jackson game, that's got to be up there as well. The 2021 Michigan game was great as well, just because of what that game meant. Both teams undefeated, how great of a game it was. I mean, no short of no again, no, no shortage of options. Dougie Tutter writes in. Now, this was a while ago. So sorry. We're getting to this a little late, Dougie. Sorry about this. What should the age cutoff for college football be? 
And why is 30-year-old Bo Nix being celebrated for finally being good? Uh, you've played more games at quarterback than anyone in college football ever has. You should be good at it by now. I look at Bo Nix or Sam Hartman or like all these other college quarterbacks that are like 29 years old, kind of the same way I look at Zach Eady at Purdue. It's like, okay, great. You've been slinging the rock for five years in Division I football. You should be head and shoulders above your competition who is 19 years old or 18 years old. I look kind of the same way. It's like, yeah, you're seven foot six. I would hope you're putting up 30 and 20 every single night. It would be an embarrassment if you were doing anything less with all these gifts that you are given right now. So that's kind of how I look at that whole situation. We're going to end on this one. This is from Zeke's fan page. This guy's truly an MVP when it comes to questions for the mailbag. What would you rather lose? Twitter or sports betting? This is a tough one. I'm going to pick the one that actively loses me money. Uh, sports gambling, I love you. It's been fun. And no, I'm not gambling money where like I'm worried about losing the house or got even worried about losing my hot and ready money. I, I bet like an embarrassingly low amount on games. Like I'm, I'm not a, a high roller, but I still do love me some action. It is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I do love it. However, uh, get, get, get me the one that's just not losing me money, Twitter. And the one that provides, you know, somehow against all odds, even more entertainment than sports gambling does. So I'll, I'll, I'll stick to that little bird app over there or X or whatever they're going to call it any given day here. God, I sound like an old man. All right. Anyway, guys, you are all truly the best. Love every single one of you. We will be back tomorrow. We're going to be breaking whatever news unfolds throughout the week. Could it be an Aiden Childs commit? really hope so but also carter elliott of Sparns illustrated and sleepers media he will be joining us if you just love the misery of michigan state basketball more of that to come your team every single day gang truly love you all go green